everybody, my name is Kelly and I am the owner of Art by Lee and Kelly. We are an Etsy store providing you with prints, t-shirts and jewellery, all designed to inspire. I wanted to create this YouTube channel to show you a bit more of the behind the scenes. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I created my Squirrel in the Sunset piece. To create this piece I used Creator on a Microsoft Surface Pro with a Renesa stylus pen. When you first open up Krita, you're going to want to create a new file. This will bring up a window or something like this. The window and screen is set up correctly for the drawing. I used an image size of 2048 by 2048 pixels. You can shrink this down or enlarge if needed, as long as the canvas is square. I also suggest a resolution of at least 300 ppi to get a high quality result if you want to, get, if you want to print your work. I am also using the RGB slash alpha colour model, however I would suggest changing this to CMYK slash alpha if you are planning on printing the design. Click create and you are now ready to start drawing. The first thing we are going to want to do is create a circle that is going to contain our whole drawing. To do this you are going to want to select the circle tool from the panel on the left, ensure the colour is black and select a brush to use. For this I use the brush called Pencil 2. Now drag your stylus from one corner of the canvas to the opposite corner to create a circle. Try to create your circle as big as possible while still fitting within the canvas and try to centralise the circle as best as possible. While you're creating this piece you're not going to want any colour outside of this circle, so if you select the contiguous selection tool from the panel on the left, it almost looks a little bit like a magic wand and click the inside of the circle. It will select that area and you will no longer be able to draw on the outside of the circle. Create a new layer by using the toolbox on the right ready for the outline of your sun. You're going to use the circle tool again. This time you're going to make a much smaller circle, slightly higher in the centre of the piece. Create another new layer ready for your background. Now you're going to need the contiguous selection tool again to select the area inside the big circle but outside of the small circle. To start off the background I have used the gradient tool from the panel on the left, selected a dark purple as my first colour and selected a much lighter purple for my second colour. If you then select the foreground to background gradient tool from the menu at the top and use your stylus to draw a line from the bottom of your canvas to the top of the canvas. If your selection has worked correctly, you should end up with a gradient from light purple at the top of the circle to dark purple at the bottom, while the smaller circle remains white on the inside. Create, an create another layer for your clouds. We want everything on separate layers so that if you make a mistake, it is easy to erase without destroying the rest of your beautiful work. The clouds I have made by building up layers of pink lines and purple lines using the brush called Bristles 3 Large Smooth. This is my favourite brush to use in Krita, whether you want a large, whether you want large blendable strokes or to build up small detail, is great for anything. Your lines are probably going to look very bold, stand out and look nothing like clouds at this stage, so you need to, need to use the brush named Blender Blur just on the edges of the lines to soften them up and blend them together into a more cloud-like shape. I then decided that the dark purple at the bottom was looking a little bit dull and needed some texture to brighten it up. To give it texture you will firstly need to create two more layers. Ensure that you have selected the top layer out of the two new layers, then use the colour selector tool from the panel on the left to select the darkest purple in your gradient. Change the layers blending mode to multiply using the toolbox on the right and find yourself a very textured brush. I use the brush called Chalk Grainy. I then made the brush as large as possible and filled in the bottom dark area of the gradient just underneath the sun. Changing your colour to a dark blue and selecting the second layer which should be underneath the first you can do the same again. This time make sure the layer is in the overlay blending mode and the texture is done. The next thing we're going to want to create is the sun. This isn't within your current selection so we're going to use the contiguous selection tool to select the area inside of your little circle and don't forget to create a new layer. Now you need to go back to the Bristles 3 large smooth brush and fill in the inside of the circle with a pale yellow colour. Create a new layer. On this layer you want to almost fill the circle just missing off the top section with a bright yellow. Layering our colours like this is going to create a more realistic glow on our sun. Create a new layer. Change your brush to a slightly darker orange colour and fill the circle from the bottom up to nearly halfway. Create another layer. This will be the final layer for your sun. On this layer you want to use the colour selector tool to select the bright pink colour in your clouds. Then change the settings of your brush to get a thin brush that you can use for detail. Use the, use the selection options at the top of the screen to deselect and then carefully trace
close around the bottom edges of the sun, making your lines thicker at the bottom and thinner as they come around the sides, completely disappearing at the top. You now have a sun. It probably looks a bit messy and not very well blended with the piece. You need to go back to the layer with the small circle on it and just delete this layer. It is no longer needed. Using the blender blur brush, you then need to go back to the four different layers of sun to blend them together. You may also need to blend slightly outwards from the sun to cover any white gaps between this and the background. I like to blend in a circular motion to keep the round shape and ensure it's not distorted. Now that your sun is blended much better, we should be able to move on to creating the main subject of this piece, the squirrel. We're going to change brushes again to the basic one brush. As you can probably tell by the name of this brush, it is one of the the most, if not the most, basic brush on Krita. It is not pressure sensitive and it is great for getting solid blocks of colour. Before we use this, we're going to need to select the inside of the large circle again using the contiguous selection tool. This won't work straight away, so in the tool options you will need to change from all layers to current layer. Find and select the layer with the large circle and then you can use the tool to make your selection. Create a new layer and now we can get back to using the basic one brush. On the new layer, we should be which should be your top layer. In black, you need to draw the quite, quite a nice thick line which is sloping down slightly. This should almost come to the middle of the piece. I find the dynamic brush tool in the panel on the left can be, helping, can be helpful for getting neat line work if you are struggling with this. Connect this with three or more curved lines heading towards the bottom of the page. The line furthest on the right should barely be visible and this should look like the shadow of the top of the bench. Create a new layer for your squirrel. You can then draw your squirrel outline as if it was sat on top of the bench. I did use a reference to draw this squirrel, Fe feel free to use a reference. I do not think anybody should see this as cheating with an art. I did use two layers for the squirrel, one for the body and one for the tail as I knew I was going to struggle with the tail. Once the outline was complete, I made the basic br one brush much smaller to add some detailing and fur to the very edge of the squirrel. I thought that this was going to be the main parts of the piece done with only a few highlights to add, however the bottom left of the piece was very bare and I knew that I needed to add something else. A small rock and a waterline would be perfect. Create a new layer for your rocks, this needs to be underneath all of the layers containing the bench and the squirrel but on top of everything else. Making the basic one brush back to its normal size, draw the outline of a rock. This is pretty simple as rocks can be any random shape you want. Once you've drawn the outline, make sure to fill it all in black like a shadow. Create a new layer for the water underneath your rock layer. Going back to the Prisoner's 3 large smooth brush, the water is drawn in a similar way to the clouds. Don't forget to increase the size of your brush slightly and you want to layer light purple and dark purple lines. Only this time, instead of using the blender blur tool to blend them into clouds, we're going to use the distort move brush to move the lines so they're almost crashing together like waves. Once you're happy with your waves, we can move on to the finishing touches of the piece. Create a new layer on top of all of the other layers and change the blending mode of this layer to hard light. Then use the colour selector tool to select that bright pink colour from your clouds. Go back to the Bristles 3 large smooth brush and use this to create highlights on the edges of the squirrel's fur, capturing the light from the sun. Highlights can also be added to the rock and bench to show the texture of their surfaces. Add one last layer to add the final shadows. This layer needs to be in the light and blending mode to ensure the colours we use can be seen on the top of the black. Select a dark blue colour for your brush and add a few brush strokes to represent the fur on the squirrel, squirrel's tail. This adds some depth and stops, hold, stops bold black areas from completely taking over your piece. The final step is to select your background layer, unlock it and erase anything that's on it. Remember to deselect before you do this. Now once your piece is saved as a PNG, the area on the outside of the circle will be, will be transparent. Congratulations, you've finished your scroll in the sunset art piece. Thank you for watching. I will be featuring this design on a t-shirt in our access, which you can find in the link in the description. Please remember to like and subscribe.